Good afternoon, everybody. It's um, really a pleasure for us to join the uh, Meningitis Fan Research Foundation and Meningococcal Genome Library celebration after 10 years. Um, I'd like firstly to thank Martin and Holly for inviting us here today from GSK Vaccine Siena in Italy. Um, I personally arrived over here to Siena more than 20 years ago uh, into the Vaccines Research Centre when the first meningococcal genome, MC58, was being sequenced for a big discovery project um, for new protein antigens for the serogroup B vaccine uh, using uh, the infamous re reverse vaccinology approach. Um, the genome library and genome information has been fundamental in this area of research ever since for everybody working on meningococcal disease um, and certainly also the BIGS database, which we also have um, a database internally that we use for all the genomic data that we're generating internally. Um, we use this kind of information, of course, for antigen conservation, population structure and dynamics. And due to the great quantities that are now available, we're moving towards vaccine coverage prediction methods based solely on genomic sequences. Uh, furthermore, many groups have tried to identify a genetic basis for the invasive nature of strains causing meningococcal disease. And today we would like to present a genotype phenotype study we've recently published using the genomic data available from the meningococcal genome library. And I will hand over to Marco Spinsanti, my colleague, who is the lead scientist of the study, to present the work. Uh, this is just our disclosure disclaimer slide, as Marco and I are both employees of GSK Vaccines. And this study was partially supported by a Euclid's grant, uh, which funded a larger consortium study on the genetic basis for pathogenic invasive disease, and in particular on the interaction of complement factor H and the factor H binding proteins of invasive bacteria. So Marco, thank you, and over to you. Factor H binding protein, or FHBP, is a meningococcal surface-exposed lipoprotein and a key vaccine antigen included in two licensed MEMB vaccines, Bexero and Trumemba, and it is able to induce antibodies that can kill meningococcal strains. Therefore, strain expressing low amounts of FHBP will not be covered, while strains with high FHBP levels will be better targeted and killed by vaccine-induced antibodies. FHBP is also important for the bacterium since it can bind the human complement factor H, a down regulator of the host's alternative complement pathway. Bacteria that do not express FHBP are killed by the complement system, whereas bacteria expressing FHBP sequester the complement factor H and hence they can evade the immune system and replicate. I'm a molecular microbiologist, so to demonstrate this importance of the FHBP levels, I generated a recombinant meningococcal strains where the expression levels of FHBP were controlled by the addition of IPTG. As you can see from this western blot, increasing concentration of IPTG led to increasing amount of protein produced by the bacteria. And we also quantify them by mass spectrometry, as you can see here in red in this graph. With the SBA, we observed that in presence of anti-FHBP antiserum, bacteria expressing low FHBP levels were not killed, while bac bacteria um, expressing high FHBP levels were killed, reflecting the uh, increasing protein amounts. These expression levels corresponded to increased surface exposed as measured by fax analysis here on the left. And when we incubated the strains in human serum, we confirmed that the ability of bacteria to survive was correlated to FHBP levels. FHBP is highly variable within the coding sequence, and there are three variant groups, variant 1, variant 2, and variant 3, which are genetically different and largely not cross-protective. Looking at the distribution of the three variants within a collection of 2,500 strains, uh, we can see that there are 63% of strains carrying a variant 1, 24% of variant 2, and 12% of variant 3. In this histogram, we reported the absolute amount of FHPP that we quantified in a set of 105 strains by mass spectrometry, an antibody-independent technique. 
From this, we determined that FHPP expression levels are also highly variable among strains, up to 15 folds. And we estimated that strains harboring FHPP variant 1 um, express more protein than strains harboring a variant 2 or a variant 3, even though there are exceptions to this, with a variant 2 strains expressing the highest value measure. To understand the reason of this variability, we decided to analyze the locus of FHPP, which is composed by two genes, CBBA and FHPP. And in particular, we looked at the region from the translational stop codon of CBBA and the N-terminal portion of the FHPP coding sequence. And from now on, I will refer to this region as FHPP intergenic region or FIR. From literature, we knew that here there are the regulatory elements that control FHPP expression a row independent terminator, the binding site from the transcriptional factor FNR, the minus 35 and minus 10 elements of the FHPP promoters, and an RNA thermosensor. Possibly, differences at the nucleotide sequence levels of these regulators might determine differences in the expression levels of FHPP. So we amplified and sequenced the FHPP intergenic region of the 105 strains of the proteomics analysis and we identified 28 different fir alleles, nine of which represent 77% of the strains. When we plot the expression data obtained by mass spectrometry that I showed you before against the intergenic region alleles, we can observe a clear correlation between the FHBP amounts and the fir allele. Therefore, we hypothesized that the amount of FHPP protein that any stain will produce is determined by the nucleotide sequence of the FHPP intergenic region. To confirm our hypothesis, we created a set of isogenic recombinant strains where the same FHPP variant, variant 1.1, was under the control of the different fir alleles. We generated data on the expression levels of these strains by Western blot here on the right. Since the strains are genetically identical, with the exception of the intergenic region of FHPP, these differences observed in the expression levels are determined by the different fir alleles, and we identified three groups based on the expression high, medium, and low. According to literature, FHPP expression can be driven by the FHPP promoter and by the CBBA promoter when there is a read-through of the RNA polymerase. Therefore, we measured by qPCR the levels of bc stronic transcript, and we observed that for the mutants that express the highest amount of FHPP, we have read-through from the CBBA promoter while for the other strains there is no read through. So here FHPP expression is driven only by the dedicated promoter. To understand why the different intergenic regional alleles determine diverse FHPP expression, we looked at the nucleotide sequences. Here is shown a multiple sequence alignment of the region under investigation. The alleles that before were showing read through from the CBBA promoter have polymorphisms in the stem uh, region of uh, the row independent terminator, which impair the complementarity of base pairing and its structure and function. The binding site of the transcriptional factor FNR and the minus 35 box were conserved among, among all fir alleles, whereas there were two alleles of the minus 10 box, and we found several polymorphisms in the region responsible for the thermoregulation of FHPP. To verify the effects on FHPP expression of the SNPs that we identified, we generated another set of recombinant strains where we mutated the regulatory elements one by one or in combination. With the mutation in red, we generated a strong uh, terminator starting from a weak one, and the effect on FHPP expression were drastic. We then generated two alleles of the um, minus 10 box in green, and you cannot see any difference when you compare um, the, the mutations in the background of the weak terminator, while you can see the difference when there is a strong terminator. Interestingly, the SNP, the SNP in the minus 35 that we identified in the variant 2 high expressing strain was driving an overexpression of FHPP. We also investigated the effect of the polymorphisms within the RNA thermosensor, which determine differences in the RNA secondary structure and that were important for general expression levels and for the ability to induce or not thermoregulation. To transpose the phenotypes that we observed with the recombinant strains to a real-life situation, we took advantage of the meningococcal genome library, the UK Mencar studies 
and uh, uh, together with other public strains from the UK. We used the genome sequences of more than 5,800 strains from either carriage or invasive meningococcal disease to define their feral alleles and to extract information and their characteristics. These strains were not only of cell group B, but they belong also to cell group C, E, W, and Y. We also found high level of genetic diversity with no major differences in ST distribution during the years. We identified 171 different feed alleles, but 11 of them represented the 88% of the strain. Thanks to this huge data set, we had the power to perform a statistical analysis on the association between these feed alleles and FHBP variants and peptides. You can see how some feed alleles are positively associated with variant 1 in blue and negatively to variant 2 and 3 in pink. FIR4 was associated to variant 1, while uh, variant 3 was associated with more than one feral allele. In particular, if we look at the um, peptides, each feral allele is usually associated with one specific peptide, um, which is normal given to their linkage. However, we found exceptions, like most of the peptides of variant 2, which, despite the high genetic um, variation within the coding sequence, are associated to the same intergenic region, P4. Or, in the case of FIR11, here zoomed in, which was also associated with multiple FHBP peptides. In this case, it, it seems that bacteria have evolved to maintain the same regulatory sequences. To understand if FHBP expression might have a role in the meningococcal disease, we use the feral alleles to predict the expression levels of the strains of this dataset and to divide the isolate in the grouping that we determine experimentally. For the low expressors, we also took into account that the variant 1 is generally higher expressed than variant 2 and variant 3. Our analysis showed that there is an augmented proportion of high expressing strains in invasive meningococcal disease cases. Other factors, such as the clonal complexes, have been associated with the invasive nature of the isolates. Here we observe that some feral alleles are strongly associated with the clonal complexes, and these might mask the contribution of the two factors in determining the onset of the disease. However, if we look at each clonal complex, we can see that invasive strains tend to have higher proportion of feral alleles with predicted high expression with respect of carriage strains. To conclude, we demonstrated that the nucleotide sequences of the FHBP intergenic region is determining in vitro FHBP expression levels in natural strains. We have shown that FHBP variant 1 are generally associated with high expressing feral alleles and that feral alleles are often associated with specific FHBP peptides. We demonstrated that strains with predicted high FHBP expression are associated with invasive meningococcal disease. And we have shown that Polymorphisms driving high FHBP expression in the bacterium are associated with IMD. And since it is known that polymorphisms in the host, and in particular in the locus of the complement factor H, are associated with increased susceptibility to the disease, it would be nice to see if there could be any uh, interaction between, between these two. I would like to thank all of the people that participated to the work and uh, the Euclid grant um, to sponsor this work and you for the attention. Thank you.